Our guest is Harold Forsyth. He's ambassador of the Republic of Peru to the United States. He's also former ambassador of Peru to Italy, Turkey, and Colombia, and also served as former Vice Minister Secretary General of Foreign Affairs of Peru. Ambassador, thank you so much for joining us today. Benis. Um, I was thinking about Peru. We know so little about it, yet the economy there is booming, I understand. Tell us a little bit about the, the pillars that drive the economy of Peru. Well, we have learned after so many failures, finally we found the right way, uh, the, the way to, the path to, to growth and to sustainable growth in democracy and with full respect of human rights. And uh, because of that, uh, our economy ranks um, among the very first in the world in terms of growth. Uh, so the, we have in, in impressive numbers. And of course, mining, mining. is the most import, in, import, uh, important sector of our economy and, and fisheries too. But there are other increasingly growing sectors which are also impressive, like, for instance, tourism mm -hmm. and so many others. So uh, we have history, we have a culture, mm -hmm. and we have an amazing present. There are a lot of things to show to the world. We are a country which comes back from an important past, and that is why we have something to give for the future, uh -huh. for the future of the world. Uh, when you say mining, what, what are the chief exports? Almost all. Copper, uh -huh. silver, gold, zinc, and so many others. There are a lot of American companies very much involved in, in the exploits of, of, of our mines. And not only Americans, of course, but Canadian companies, Australian companies, and Chinese companies. Mm. So this is this gives us a lot of strength. We have a lot of prestige in that particular area. We have problems too, and probably your viewers heard of some of these special problems that we face with some communities in different areas. Tell me. Well, there is a problem in uh, in a province in Cajamarca, and uh, the the community is so strong that the investment of a very important American company has not been able to, to start, has not been able to begin the project. Mm -hmm. So, but we are confident that in, that in the near future we will come to an agreement. The, the potential is still great. What's there. the nature of the project? It's a very big, it's a very big I investment related to several uh, minerals, like for instance gold. And, uh, and the community is strongly very, is very much against it. And they have the reasons, and the reasons which can be respectable to you. But at the same time, the investment has a tremendous potential for the country as a whole. Mm. So we are in the process of negotiating new options. Mm. Uh, and uh, of course, we need the agreement of the community, mm -hmm. and everybody understands that. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, a specific single problem, uh, the, the climate for investment in the mining sector is very attractive. And not only there, in every other sector of our economy. Mm. Mining is very dangerous, isn't it? Huh? But not only, you're saying something interesting, not only in Peru, yeah. but all over the world. Sure, sure, So sure. we're not an exception. No, no, no. But profits are great. Uh -huh. And uh, that's why we are urge the 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 American uh, community related to that particular area, the the private sector uh -huh. of the United States. Uh, we urge the, we urge them to to go there and to see by themselves which their chances are, and they will discover that uh, our country is, 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 is has a lot to to show to the world in that specific area. We have a tremendous potential. Is it frustrating sometimes for you that uh, Latin America does not get as much play in the American media as uh, it could or should? Well, media, 
more or less, more or less, but that's not very much important at all. Uh -huh. the, 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 the real thing is that we, and I can speak for my country, we get a lot of attention to, to the United States, and we have gotten that attention for, let's say, 180 years. Mm. We've been working very hard for so many decades, and uh, our bilateral relations, I mean, Peru and the United States, are in the highest point right now. Uh -huh. Let me tell you something, Secretary of Defense Panetta went to Peru two weeks ago, and I was there with him. Uh -huh. And then after only one week, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton went to Peru also. So that, that, that's an amazing information. Mm -hmm. And uh, we get a lot of attention for, uh, here in the United States, and of course the United States gets a lot of attention there in my country. Uh, Secretary Clinton yes. was there for a huge uh, uh, conference empowerment of women, right? Yes. When uh, Secretary Panetta went down there, why would he go there? He went there because, well, he had already visited a few other Latin American countries, mm -hmm. and, but we, did, we had not had the chance to receive him in Lima. And our new Minister of Defense very much wanted to know him. Mm -hmm. So uh, they met. Uh, I was lucky enough to be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only with our Minister of Defense, but also with, with the President of, of my country, mm -hmm. with, with Ollanta Taumala. So they had very fruitful uh, meetings and uh, a lot of things related to common problems. Security, defense, mm. subversion, mm -hmm. drug trafficking, of course. Yes and so many other things which relate to the long-standing cooperation that in that particular field uh, we have with the United States. And after the meetings, both ministers, I mean, Secretary Panetta and our minister, left to Montevideo, Uruguay, where a meeting of all the ministers of defense of the Americas took place. Wow. Let me take a little break, uh, yes. Mr. Ambassador. Harold Forsyth is our guest, and he is the ambassador from the Republic of Peru, representing that country here in the United States. We're thrilled to have you with us. Sit tight. This is America and the World. This is America is made possible by the National Education Association, the nation's largest advocate for children and public education. Poonsan Corporation, forging a higher global standard. The CTC Foundation, AFO Communications, and the Rotondaro Family Trust. Mr. Ambassador, um, the country is evidently beautiful. Mountains, ocean, uh, jungle, basin. Uh, tell us a little bit about the beauty of Peru and some of the and the neighboring countries and the neighborhood, as I call it. Well, Latin America is uh, South America. The Americas are. How do you read? Which is correct, Latin America or South America? Which is correct to say? Educate us. Well, Latin America refers to to culture. Mm -hmm. all, all, all countries in the Americas with a Latin origin, mm -hmm. which can be traced back to the Roman Empire, mm -hmm. let's say. And uh, that happens from Mexico to the Patagonia in the southern part of Argentina. So all that is called Latin America, which is an area characterized by culture, by history. Mm -hmm. Now, when we speak about South America, we speak about a geographical area, mm. which is something different. Uh -huh. The southern part of the so-called Americas. But there is something very funny, and your viewers would like to hear that. The United States, your country, is increasingly becoming a Latin American country too. Indeed. Indeed. Because if you're having 55 million inhabitants uh, uh, of uh, Latin origin uh -huh. living and, uh -huh. and working, and having a future in this wonderful country, 
then United States is a Latin American country too. So we will consider the United States a brother country. Thank you so much, Ambassador. <laughs> what would you say, to follow up on that, would be characteristic of the Latin American people? Sorry, you're relating that to, to the case of the United States? No, I'm just so. relating it to people who are Latin American. What would you say are their characteristics? Oh, there is a common heritage. Yes, there yeah, we go. There is a common heritage. What would for, you say? First of all, the language. The language? The language, okay. yeah. The, the, the language that we share, which is, of course, Spanish, is un, is un idioma maravilloso y muy bello, and we share that and we speak that fluently. What did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> that our language is a beautiful language. It, <laughs> it is. What I say. It, it is. is, and you know what I say? Even the sad songs are happy. Yeah, probably. <laughs> is that probably, fair to yeah, say? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Our songs are sad. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. they're happy songs. But they're happy at the same time. Yeah. Uh huh. And at the same time, we uh, we share re religion. Yes. We we come mostly from a Catholic heritage, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, and at the same time, we share a lot of things that we have in common. Uh, our tastes. Uh, I, our love for, for, for life, our love for nature, uh -huh. and so family. Many, family so is important. Yeah, isn't family, it? family. But, but family is more or less important all over the world. Here, for you Americans, family is something yes. tremendously important also. Yeah, but th th yeah, there are so many things that unite us, mm -hmm. Latin Americans. Mm -hmm. Yes. Who's in the neighborhood, though? What are the countries that are abounding in Peru? Ecuador in the north, mm -hmm. and Colombia. Mm. A beautiful country, Colombia. I've been ambassador uh, of Peru to Colombia mm -hmm. before. And then Brazil, mm. which is an amazing Latin American country too. Yeah. But it's a Latin American co country with an important difference. They come from a Portuguese heritage, mm -hmm. and Portuguese is their language. Mm -hmm. And then Bolivia, which was physically, geographically part of Peru mm -hmm. a long time ago. And then Chile. Mm. You mentioned Colombia and Brazil. The economies in those two countries are slowing down a bit, yet at the same time, Peru continues to grow. Six percent, or I think it's about six. Is it about six percent? And, and, and last year it was an even higher average. Uh, so let's see what will the number be at the end of the year. Yeah. Are you? But oh, it's still, yes. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I interrupted. No, but, but it's still. Uh, 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 the rate of our growth is impressive among the Western world. Yes. 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 Now, because of exports being so important, and you mentioned the zinc, the copper, the gold, and so on and so forth, are you mining, fisheries, and fisheries? Yes. Yeah. Uh, are you afraid a little bit because of the slowdown in the United States, in the European? Uh, union and also in China, that that will affect the economy? Not in the case of Europe and, and the United States, because we know how to face that. We have experience and uh, things are, and, uh, are doing well. Mm -hmm. For instance, trade with the United States is, is improving despite of the uh, difficult times of, of the economy in, in this country. Uh -huh. But we're kind of afraid of what would happen if China uh, and faces a recession or something like that. Because our trade with China is also very impressive. And not only that, but the but we have huge investments of of Chinese uh, financial resources present in our country. So that could affect us to some extent. Let's see. One of the ambassadors from uh, one of the South American countries uh, said at one time when the United States was so focused on Iran and Iraq, uh, 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 Iraq and Afghanistan, and Iran as well in the Middle East, Yes, that uh, the uh, South American countries had to kind of go at it alone and had to forge new alliances. And you have mentioned a very important alliance with China. Hmm? Yeah, but it's not because uh, the United States was busy with other countries, no. But it's changed, the hasn't it, a little bit from a dependent relationship to much more of an independent relationship for the South American countries. Yeah, because we're growing. Yes. And we, ha we have found our own place in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the relations with, for instance, China, they are also real, but, but not because we found China uh, due to uh, destruction from the United States. No, China has also grown. Mm 
Yeah. And they have become a, a great player in international affairs, in, in economy and in trade especially. Yes. And uh, everybody on earth, even in the United States, is there. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Because you cannot avoid it. It's a very powerful country. And uh, the United States sees that approach with China of Latin American countries with good eyes also. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, we speak about that. We exchange views not only with the United States, but also with China. And more than that, China with the United States exchange views about Latin America also. Uh -huh. so, so this is part of the world. This is the way it works? It's, it is. It's... Uh, it's uh, a country is uh, the world without borders now, isn't it, really, huh? Yeah. A world a little. without borders. A little, anyway. yeah. I want to talk a little bit about drugs. That's a very dislikable issue. Yes, it is. It is. Yeah. A, and, but it's, it's, it's odd that if you think of supply and demand, the demand is in the United States. The supply is in some of the Latin American countries. That's also true. But, uh, but for instance, the, the, the drug which is produced, let's say, mm. in, in Peru, mm. doesn't go to the, to the U.S. market. Mm. Now, mm. Only very small portion of the, of the drugs which are consumed here in the United States comes from drugs which are produced in Peru. Only 4% or something like that. Yeah, I'm thinking of much in more general of the, terms. the general so, terms. Yeah, the, the, but the, there are tremendously powerful new markets, not only the United States. I mean, markets for those illicit products, I should say. Yeah. Like, for instance, Brazil, uh -huh. Argentina also, mm -hmm. Eastern Europe, Russia, even Africa. And now there is a growing new emerging market I should say, which is China. Mm. Um, one of the things that I read was that Peru is kind of, well, a couple of things. Number one, uh, there was a conference in June uh, in Lima, which uh, was attended by 60 countries. Yes. Some uh, uh, n uh, 10 international organizations. And uh, I'm wondering what came out of that. What came out of that conference? Because I know that when the Summit of the Americas was held in Colombia, in Bogota, some of the Latin American countries wanted to put on the table that uh, some of the drugs should be declassified to take the profit motive, to take organized crime out of it, to take violence out of it. Did any of that come up in the June conference in Lima? No. No? no. What did they talk about? Well, they talk about different means to, to control that, uh, different new forms to, 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 to reduce the production to some, some alternate options. For, what are the for people the in Latin but, but, America? But, 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 Go ahead. This thing that you're mentioning. Yes. Uh, to, to declassify it. Or, yeah. Yeah. That wasn't mentioned at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, there, there is only one government in Latin America and that's the president of Guatemala, uh -huh. who had publicly endorsed that option in, in, oh. in the past. But um, I personally have, I might be wrong, but I have never heard that any other head of a state or any other government official suggesting that option. So Well, the United that, States is against it, yet. We're also against it. And, and yet, 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 Ambassador, in some of the Western countries, here in the United States, there will be initiatives on the ballot in three western states to declassify uh, marijuana for recreational use. Well, that's marijuana. Oh, that's did you not, you're not talking about no, that's a, no, 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 not really. You the, don't the, see that as no, the, the hardcore, the hardcore big problem, the big problem, cocaine and yeah, heroin like and such. Yeah, yeah? something like that's that. That's what you're talking about more. Yes, well, that was suggested by, by some specific head of a state, but so more than just Guatemala as far as marijuana is concerned? No, about, about, as far as mar marijuana is concerned, I don't really know. Ah. But, uh, but, but uh, in the case of cocaine, it was suggested by, ah. by one head of a state, but that doesn't really have a chance, at least not in Peru. You sure. have a, a, a kind of a forward-looking uh, 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 education, prevention, 
and treatment. You very rarely hear a country uh, heralding its, um, because it's a horrible addiction, huh? It is. But we are not that bad in that particular matter. Mm -hmm. So we are working very hard in order to control addiction. And uh, as, as, is, as is being considered in many other uh, countries in the world, mm -hmm. we are considered this as a sickness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, good, and, for you. good for and, you. Good for you. Yes, good for you. And not only not only as a crime, but as a sickness mainly. Mm. So that has given us new options to deal with that uh, scourge, which mm. is the scourge, let's say, the mega scourge of the 21st century. Talk a little bit about uh, a tourist coming to Peru. Let's change the switch the gears and say. How would you uh, show them around? What would, what would you have them see? Because to go to Peru, that would be something unique for a lot of Americans. Yeah. Nice weather. Ah, yes. Beautiful beaches. Ah. And uh, we have very pretty women also. Uh-huh. At the same time, the most delicious food that you can imagine. Oh, mm -hmm. that's part of it. Actually, uh, the greatest chef on earth, Ferran Adria, uh -huh. will be here tomorrow in Washington just to promote Peruvian food uh -huh. because he considers ours the number one in the world. So we're talking about Ferran Adria, and that is not a joke. So if any, if anyone, of our, if any of your viewers have any doubt about it, they should go and see. If we sat down for a dinner prepared by this top chef, what would we be ha what would we have? Probably my wife should come and she will be able to explain a little. I don't know how to cook. I, I just I just enjoy my, the food of my country, but also our sweets, our desserts, mm -hmm. and our drink. The national drink is pisco, you know, and ah. the, and the national cocktail of Peru is pisco sour, which was, by the way, invented in 1936 in Lima by an American citizen, uh -huh. Mr. Morris, in a famous bar. Ah. And uh, since then, it has become a trademark of Peru all over the world, Pisco Sour. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have as your primary mission here in Washington? Well, of course, to increase uh, the, the historic friendship between our two countries. Uh -huh. And that means acting in four specific pillars, uh, I would say. Of course, to protect and promote every, something which is a fact. A, a million Peruvians live and work in the United States. Mm. And they have a future here mm -hmm. and in different parts of the country. It's not a tremendous amount of people, but it's a respectable yeah. Yeah, a, amount of people. At the same time, to promote trade. It, the United States has become the, the number one uh, commercial partner, and we have a very exemplary uh, free trade agreement between our two countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, that means promoting investment by the United States also uh -huh. in Peru. Uh -huh. Actually, in the next few days, a very big mission of uh, entrepreneurs from different representatives of the private sector of the United States will be in Peru exploring new options for the investment. Mm -hmm. At the same time, there is something important, which is drug trafficking, and you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. And that means cooperation in, in some specific matters related to security and defense. Mm -hmm. And finally, there is a political and diplomatic approach between our two countries, and we're doing fine. Mm. You've been posted in a number of important uh, countries. You have uh, been here for a while now. Um, very accomplished uh, person. What's the single most important lesson you've learned in your life so far that helps you navigate on a day-to-day -day basis? When you are posted in a country, you have to respect the history and the culture of the country in which you are posted. Mm -hmm. And you have to learn to love it to feel something for the country in which you are. And, uh, and for me, for myself, being the ambassador of Peru to the United States is a great honor, of course, and, uh, and uh, you learn to develop a special feeling 
for, for, for the country in which you work and in which you live. Because we live here. And we live in a house which is absolutely beautiful. That house has belonged to, to, to the proven state for 70 years or so. Hmm. So we have the mission to take care of it as, uh, as one of our national treasures. And at the same time to open it for, for the United States, for the people of this wonderful country. And uh, we try to avoid mistakes, mm -hmm. to behave formally and seriously, and also to promote the marvels of the culture of my country. Mr. Ambassador. Sir. Thank you so much for your visit with it's us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And all the best. Thank you. For information about my new book, The Chance of a Lifetime, an online video for all This Is America programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net. And now you can follow us on Facebook. This Is America is made possible by the National Education Association, the nation's largest advocate for children and public education. Poonsan Corporation, forging a higher global standard. The CTC Foundation, AFO Communications, and the Rotondaro Family Trust.